Alan, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, guys. Yeah, um, I guess you'd say that we learned a little something. Maybe uh, the same lesson they learned in San Francisco with Brock Purdy, which is you can't come back when you have a quarterback trying to play a certain type of football. When you're uh, trying to play a complimentary football game, very hard when you fall behind. And it felt like this one was over by halftime. When they scored that last touchdown right before the half, uh, it just it just felt like that would probably be a bridge too far for the Bears. Yeah, and we went into the game wondering, gosh, how did Vegas have the spread that they have, right? Why are the Bears uh, nine, I think they were going to the game set eight or nine point underdogs. And you take a look at their, after their last five victories, they're averaging giving up 30 points and only scoring 15. So obviously Vegas always checks in on, on trends and what the team is doing after they win games, after uh, it says they've been coached by Coach Eva Flues, and they do it again, right? They come out after a win, after everyone said, man, played really good against the Raiders, gave them all that credit. They came out and played bad again, didn't look prepared. Uh, you know, the game plan on defense really was probably to make Herbert check it down, and that's what they did, but then they didn't tackle, right? They didn't right. tackle well. Uh, they didn't get guys on the ground. I'd like to know, I still haven't seen a stat, what was Herbert's farthest throw last night? Because everything looked like a check down and guys are breaking tackles like you're talking about. Uh, they, they scored 24 points by half and they break they, uh, the 6'8 tight end breaks the tackle there on Tyreek Stevenson, right? So a lot of bad defense out there, a lot of bad tackling. They were missing their safety brisker. As far as Bajan and the offense goes, kind of get what we've got the last two years, right? It's just not moving the ball after wins, not scoring enough points. Uh, obviously, the defense doesn't get the Chargers a punt to the second half. And we knew going into the game that they had a specific way they won, guys. They have a, in the last five, four or five wins, 170-plus rushing yards, and they win a turnover battle, and neither of that happened last night. 25 carries, 73 yards, and certainly when you fall behind 14 to nothing, you're not going to be as able to establish a running game. You don't have a quarterback that's built or designed to come from behind. But when you looked at the offensive line, was that the biggest problem in not being able to establish the run, Olin? Was it the, the game plan or sequencing? Or how would you explain why the Bears struggled uh, with the running game against the Chargers? Yeah, they, they fell behind early, right? And, I, you know, I remember that they scored, did score on that Darrington Evans toss, right, where Darnell Wright leads them into the end zone. But it just wasn't consistent enough, right? They got stopped on fourth and one in the second half. Uh, a couple of linemen got beat on that play. I don't know whether it was uh, Lucas Patrick's back, but they just seemed like this defense uh, knew how to beat this offensive line. The offensive line didn't work as well together. Uh, you don't want to get to third and long, no matter how bad this defense was playing. Uh, they did have, again, the 32nd ranked uh, pass defense in the league, did have a breakdown communication, but Velas Jones doesn't catch the ball. But as far as the run game goes, uh, David, just not – Consistent enough with running the ball, you fall behind early. You can't stick to your game plan. Uh, obviously, you, you lose Trent Taylor. You use Trent Taylor to threaten, I guess, a sweep from him. I guess they felt like he'd be threatened. I'd like to ask Khalil Mack, how in the hell Khalil Mack knew that they were running a sweep to Trent Taylor? Because I thought no way they would give the ball to Trent Taylor, but Khalil <laughs> Mack knew it, uh, played it. Uh, I was amazed by that by him, but uh, that's not in the scouting report. But you come out early, and, and I'm just confused, right, because – uh, they hit Mooney. It's a nice play, 41 yards. I heard you guys talking about he needs to get up and continue running. He sure does. Uh, but the next play, they, they run the ball to Deontay Foreman. He gets stopped, but they're faking a sweep to Trent Taylor. And I'm wondering, uh, what, what is that doing to the defense, right? What about Mooney? What about DJ Moore? And then all of a sudden, on the next play, uh, you're handing the ball to Trent Taylor, right? This is the first drive. That, that was in your first four to five plays. I, I just – some things I just don't understand. I don't think Trent Taylor – threatens the Chargers, Chargers defense too much, but I guess the Bears do. What What is going on with Phelous Jones? I mean, it, you know, I hate to say it, but every time I see him, I'm reminded, oh, that guy doesn't belong on the team. I think he had a, he had a kick return where he was three yards deep and he brought the ball out to the 22. And all you could think of is, why not just down the ball there? Why? I mean, nobody, what are you doing? And, you know, he had a bad special teams penalty. And then, of course, I don't know, you know, that David believes that was a great metaphor for the Bears season, that he 
runs into the end zone wide open, collapses, the ball somehow hits him in the stomach, and he drops it. I mean, it was like it was like it, it, you needed a clown car and you'd have completed the picture. False hope. Yeah, as, as far as the third-round pick, uh, Valus Jones goes, I don't know. I don't know what his day-to-day preparation is like at the building. Uh, we do keep seeing him. It always seems like there's some something happens when he's on the field, and, and it's not great for the Bears, right? And we're waiting for him. We heard about him when he came out of college. Uh, he was a dynamic returner, right? And then they had to take him off punt return because he struggled catching the ball there. And then you're waiting for him on the gadget place. To me, guys, uh, the, there was the deal to drop ball, whether Bajan underthrew it uh, or not. You got to come down with that ball, right? You can't slip on a turf there. You got to catch it. It hits you in the stomach. Uh, can you hold on? I think it hit him in the stomach, his arm, his leg, and then it finally hit the ground. But just I, I like talking about looking at the whole picture and saying, okay, if Valus Jones is, is suited up, if he is who we say he is, if he is why we drafted him, if we're going to have him here, then why aren't we faking jet sweeps to him on the first drive, right? Why are we faking it to Trent Taylor? Uh, uh, that, to me, guys, is the biggest thing. When I see the game plan, I'm thinking, okay, that's supposed to be Valus Jones there, right? That's supposed to be his job, scare the defense with his speed. We hand him jet sweeps. He has big returns. So the, the, the Bears only know what his preparation is like in the building. I don't think they have a lot of answers this morning, honestly, when you look at that whole offense and the way they all played together and, and why we couldn't score points, why couldn't we move the ball, uh, why did we go to Wildcat, uh, why, why do we have two penalties in a row, why are guys jumping off sides? They have a lot of questions to answer this morning. And guys, you got to go back to the fact that after their five wins, uh, they've had games like this continuously after Eber, uh, since they've been coached by Coach Eberflus. This segment with Olin Cruz sponsored by Plumbers 911. Plumbing emergency? Call the plumbing professionals available 24 7 at 1 833 Plum 911. Okay, Olin, so how does it go today in the building? What's the thought process at the quarterback position for Matt Eberflus, maybe Ryan Poles? Uh, and how would you proceed with the Tyson Bagent, Justin Fields situation? Did last night provide a lot of clarity for you? No, uh, not, not at all, because I, I got to go back, you know, since Justin Fields arrived. And I got to go back to at least last year since he's been coached by Coach Getze and watch those tapes and, and watch Bajan's tapes and see, is there any more I need to see from Justin Fields, right? And if I'm, and I think Kevin Warren and Ryan Poles are involved in this decision. It looked like Kevin Warren was taking a lot of notes last night, right, about what was going on in the game. Um, if, I, if I'm them, if it's me in charge, I got walk down there and I say, uh, Coach Getze, I got to see Justin Fields in a spread attack offense where we're using his legs all the time, where we're threatening the defense, we're getting him out of the pocket. And, and, and obviously in the NFL, you have to beat teams from the pocket, but I like to see a little more zone read out of a spread formation, a little more doing things that, that really threaten the defense with Justin Fields' athleticism and see if we can win games going on like that, right? Can we win a lot of football games? I don't know if this team, guys, to be honest with you, is built that way, right? I don't know if their defense and their special teams are good enough to say we're just going to run the ball, win the turnover battle, trust our defense to give us good field position, trust our special teams to give us good field position. This team right now, guys, no matter who's that quarterback, is not built good enough to win consistently and see, okay, can this quarterback win games consistently with this unit? The offensive line always seems to be in flux. We talked about Vilas Jones. That plan didn't work out. The defense wouldn't tackle last night. Uh, the Chicago Bears, when you sit up there and you put it on the grease board, what quarterback should we go with? Here's the problem with all our teams. What should we do with our offense? Man, you have so many questions to answer. I just don't know how you get to the bottom line this year to who, who's the starting quarterback. Is it Beijing? Is it Fields? At some point uh, with this team, I don't know if it really matters. I don't know if you can really get to the answer. Uh, if you're going to keep Fields in the pocket like you did against the Vikings, then go with Bajan, right? Because that's kind of quarterback he is. If you're not going to open it up, uh, if you're going to keep handing the ball to Trent Taylor on jet sweeps, then go to Bajan, right? Because uh, you need to let Justin Fields spread the, spread the field, uh, use his legs, threaten the defense, and then throw the ball from the pocket, especially on the, the games where he looks like the Vikings. You could see early on, right? You could see early on that he wasn't going to operate from the pocket that day. So I'm going to get him out of the pocket until I get him comfortable and then throw the ball. Uh, so it just depends on when I'm asking questions is, uh, Coach Getsy, what are we going to do here uh, with if we put Fields back in the game? Because we cannot 
We cannot go to the same offense and keep saying the same things about Justin Fields week in and week out. Does, I'm trying to figure out if they figured out something, if Ketsy has learned something from watching another quarterback in his system. Uh, I mean, I, it seems like that's kind of the way they want to play, but I don't know how you win um, a, a complimentary football game if you're not, if you don't get the lead, if you can't play from the lead. And, uh, you know, usually we see a lot of different players contribute in that form. Uh, would would he have learned something about how to use fields and what he can't do by watching what this guy can and can't do? Chris Collinsworth seems to think so, right? He seems to think everyone should turn on Bages film <laughs> and study it. I, I don't know, uh, uh, Molly, you can always learn from, from, from players in front of you. And if you're just talking about uh, Luke Getze, what has he learned? Uh, may, maybe he's been humbled a little bit. Uh, maybe, okay, we'll open this offense up a little bit, run a little more zone read, run a little RPO concept, run like a triple option, right? You've heard Urban Meyer talk about how they came up with the spread offense, right? Everything is a triple option, whether it be the handoff, the pass on the edge, just back to a little more of those concepts of what you, Justin Fields did well last year. I don't know if he's ever going to be a guy who puts up 250 plus yards a game throwing the ball. Uh, I think we've seen that. I think we can all agree on that by now, right? That, that how do you win games with Justin Fields? I got to go back, guys, and I got to go look at, I didn't have time for the game last night, but I was thinking about, I got to go back to when he's played well. And I got to study that film. I got to take a look at the exact things we're doing, the exact concepts we're running, the exact scheme. And I have to run those. I have to put him in the most favorable position to look good uh, as an organization. They need to look at those things. They need to all go in a room, study his best game, say, okay, we're going to run this. We're going to tailor the offense to him. If they do put Justin Fields back in, tailor the whole thing to him. And then let's find out. Let's find out if he can lead us to wins and victories and see if we can win games like this. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, to win games like that, if, even if you look at Lamar Jackson in Baltimore, look at the defense he's had, look at the special teams that he's had. The Bears just don't have the ingredients right now to win games consistently, and they just don't have the talent. So it's a hard thing to do to judge anybody who is at Hallis Hall right now with the talent they've had the last two years. Oh, and you mentioned Chris Collinsworth, and I think it's somewhat easy to pick on the broadcast, but I think it's necessary maybe to pick on the broadcast a little. How do you interpret how positive they were about Tyson Bajan, even as he struggled? And how do you explain comments that maybe Justin Fields could learn something from studying Tyson Bajan? This is stuff that comes from the team. You know how it works. So does that tell you that the team – believes exactly what we were hearing from the NBC's uh, booth because it made you wonder, mm. are they seeing something internally that's not really there? Yeah, it's, it's, I think maybe Chris Collinsworth has what we all have, right, David? Analyst fatigue from this Bears team. And you're just trying to find anything, <laughs> find anything to watch, anything to say when you watch him because all of a sudden you're in a blowout again, right? And, then, you know, I wake up this morning. I think to myself, what the hell am I going to talk about and I'm studying their last losses and games after the losses, right? So some of that is that. Some of that is what you're saying, David. So a lot of that stuff they have is from production meetings, like you're saying, right? Uh, like we've all been through it where we sit in there and, and, and they just start talking to the analyst. And, okay, maybe he can learn from the way Bajan gets the ball out, the way he doesn't take sacks. A lot of times yesterday, uh, Bajan probably should have just took a sack, right? A lot of pressure on him, a lot of pressure on his feet, but he's getting the ball out. He, he's reading the defense. From the pocket, right? If that's what that's what we want to learn, as so we keep hearing about Justin Fields, so it's a great point you make. Uh, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, Chris. It seems like they really want to do a story uh, on Beijing playing great. I'm talking about Sunday Night Football. I mean, they were doing it the week before, right? The week before, after the last game they had Sunday Night Football, they were already talking about what they didn't even know Beijing was going to be the starter or not, and they were already talking about the arm wrestling and the great story that this kid was coming out of Shepherd College, and he is a great story. But I always tell people this, no matter how great story you are, no matter how many things you're working on, in the end, in the NFL, you have to play good football, period. This segment with Olin Krutz is sponsored by Busey Bank, building business, growing wealth since 1868. Olin, how many players, I mean, how many upgrades do the Bears need? As we look at a team 
that is in the second year of a of a teardown rebuild. Let's be honest about it. They lost ten games to end last season. How many positions do you look at and say, okay, well they're set there, they're okay there, or is this is this basically kind of start from scratch? There's there's not a lot of young players kind of getting. You know, we we talk about. Jalen Johnson, for instance, who thinks he's either going to be traded or uh, signed to an extension. How many guys are worth keeping on this team? It's, it's a great question because a lot of guys that are worth keeping, uh, when you go through the roster, right, you go through the roster and say, man, here's a guy who looks like he's elevated his play and can be, uh, you know, a pro bowl, all pro type player or a guy in my locker room that I need. Uh, those guys have injury problems, right? So it's a, it's yeah. a strange team to look at. And think those things because uh, they seem to always be out periodically. And you're like, man, I mean, we just need you every week competing at a at a consistent high level basis. It's a very interesting question, uh, Molly, that uh, we'd have to go through it name by name. And whether you when you get to that name where you're saying, man, here's a guy, right? Here's a guy you can build on, but oh, he gets nicked up. He doesn't play right. all the time, so I don't know. So DJ Moore, right? DJ Moore is the one guy I can say. Uh, shows up every week, threatens, threatens the other team, uh, you know, plays really good football, get the ball in his hands, he's going to make somebody miss, he's tough, and he's there all the time. So he'd be the one guy I could say, you know, Cole Komet play, plays it, but he's got to stop jumping off sides, but he's there all the time. You know, uh, you know, Molly, I hear you say uh, avail availability is the best ability, right? you got to be there all the time in the NFL, playing consistent, playing hard football. And right now it seems like every time we get to a point where you're like, man, this team may be taking a step. And all of a sudden during the week, you hear all these things, right? Brisker's out. Is Eddie Jackson playing? Who's playing offensive line? Lucas Patrick has a bad back. You know, we'll go back to Kevin Jenkins' history, right? Darnell Rice fighting through a left shoulder arm. So just, you know, if, if I'm Ryan Pose, if I'm Kevin Warren, I'm taking a look at my health situation. How can I keep these guys healthy? How can I keep these guys training through the year? Because I need them every week. But, but if you do do that, you do have some pieces on this team. But for right now, like you're saying, you have a way more questions, obviously, with their record. You, you don't even have to go through it too much. You just go through their record the last two years. You have way more questions than answers. We need somebody at Hallis Hall to pull into that building today, start asking the hard questions, start her holding guys responsible, start setting a different standard. Because right now, when you win games, you come out every time after and you lay an egg, which tells me, you're taking too many victory laps. You don't know how to handle success. When you have uh, uh, when you have one victory, everyone acts like they've arrived. Everyone acts like they're in a the Super Bowl. They won the Super Bowl. We heard about Mark Grody talking about the music on Thursday, and they're all having a dance party up there. No, 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 guys. No, no, no. After that record the last two years, no. Let's settle down. Uh, let's go back to work, and, and let's execute the details because you got to be honest with this team if you're a coach. you got to be honest with this team if you're in that building you got to tell them directly, you are not the most talented team. So you have to overcome your lack of talent with your hard work. Quickly, Olin, what's the deal with Eddie Jackson? Because if he's in uniform, I can't imagine a more emergency situation than facing Justin Herbert and watching him shred your secondary. If he's in uniform, why is he not on the field? I, I, I don't know the answer to that question. If he's in uniform, uh, uh, like you wasted a special team spot, especially at safety, right? So – uh, I didn't really see the – like, really study the film that well. I don't know if he got any plays. I don't think so. I didn't see him out there. I don't think he was on special teams at all. So it just seems like a wasted roster slot to me. I'm as confused uh, by that decision as you are. Uh, you know, I played a lot of years in the NFL, never really saw something like that. Uh, maybe they were hoping to put him in and maybe in warm-ups or maybe as the game went on, he said that his foot wasn't feeling good. But if it's that bad, we got to figure out what's wrong with his foot, right? Again, another guy, right, we just talked about. Who are the guys that you on this roster that you like? Well, there's another one, David, right? Very good football player, but we got to find a way to keep our guys healthy. Great stuff, Olin. Thank you. Thanks, Olin. Thank you, guys.